first i'll ask you a question do you believe that every person of african descent can grow healthy hair to a predetermined length or to whatever length that we can manage if so good for you because i believe so too now let's learn how to grow hair by understanding how the hair itself works Hello everyone, welcome to this community of very beautiful people who see, create and express beauty in many aspects of our lives. My name is Chimi Kankari and my mission is to enable you to find the best way to achieve your most beautiful self in several aspects of your life. Today, I'll be doing a reaction video about hair. I'm doing a reaction video to how hair works. Kids Health presents How the Body Works with Chloe and the Nerve. First of all, I just like the way this sounds. It reminds me of SpongeBob SquarePants, and I just like the way it sounds. It's, it's a catchy video. Chloe, you'll never guess what I got for all of the money in our piggy bank. Magic beans for growing hair. Why do you want to grow hair? Uh. So this is this part made me laugh. It made me laugh for a few reasons. First of all, this is. Probably Jack and the Beanstalk um, idea. This the concept of magic beans is just Jack and the Beanstalk um, concept. But also, it made me think: What if tomorrow uh, someone in the natural hair community says that you can use bean water to grow your hair? Do you think that you'll fall for that, or do you think that you follow that trend? It's quite funny sometimes when I look at YouTube videos and then see different methods to grow hair. Some people suggest that oh, rice water can help you grow hair and then they, they cite the yaw woman. Some people suggest that oh using ginger can help you grow hair. Some people suggest that using garlic can help you grow hair. Some people suggest that using eggs can help you grow hair. Some people suggest that using onion butter can help you grow hair. Once you start listening to all of that, you think it's like a grocery list. And like, wait, do I need to choose between eating and then growing my hair out or what? So <laughs> when he said magic beans, I was like, wait. I'm sure that if someone says magic beans or even beans, black IP beans self, I'm sure if someone said that that can help you grow hair, I'm sure some people would jump on that trend and then start using bean water, even cooked beans self to grow their hair out. Um, people should believe that your hair can grow naturally. Your hair grows from the scalp. It's just about retaining length. So whatever can help you retain length, try to do that. Not trying to make your hair from the scalp grow when the scalp is already growing hair. Is just retaining length, so please don't fall for some crazy lie or some crazy fad that will, they'll say, oh, use this thing to grow your hair, use this to grow 10 inches in two days. Please don't fall for that. So let's continue. Uh... No reason, Nerb. Hair doesn't grow from beans. <laughs> um, Chloe, I'm pretty sure it does. Come with me, I'll show you how hair grows. Ooh. Why are we in the middle of a forest? Does hair come from trees? These aren't trees, Nerb. That's a strand of hair. We're in hair. Hair? What is hair doing here? That's the thing, Nerb. Hair grows almost anywhere. When you think of hair, you probably think of the hair that grows on the head. But there's hair on almost every part of the body. Which is true. Yes, there's hair on almost every part of your body. Um, but the one, at least for human beings, but the only primates that grow hair predominantly on our hair and less hair on the other parts of our body. Um, so we've evolved to grow longer hair just on our scalp and then shorter hairs on the remaining part of our bodies. But when we look at our other um, ape family, um, we see that they have even hair or at least a lot of hair all over their body. So yeah, hair grows on over your body. That's what you need. Laser, laser treatments. If you, I mean, if you want it, if you want laser treatments, you can get it. But um, hair grows on all, all over your body. Weird. You mean weirdly awesome? Some of the hair on the body is easy to see, like eyebrows. But other hair, like the hair on the cheek, is so fine that it's almost invisible. I have hair on my cheek. Why would my body need that? Depending on where hair is, it has different jobs. 
The hair on top of my head keeps my head warm. My eyelashes protect my eyes from dirt and dust. And your eyebrows... Attract the lady nerves. <laughs> It's funny, it's, it's, it was funny for me when he said attract lady nerves. The way he just did his eyes was just very funny. And protect your eyes from sweat dripping down into them. Amazing. But if this hair stuff is everywhere, where does it come from? It all starts in the skin. <laughs> so this is where we get to the very interesting parts where you guys really want to see. So that's where the magic beans are planted. No beans, Nurb. Ah, you stupid good-for-nothing beans. I curse the day I bought you. <clears throat> Please continue. <laughs> His reaction was very funny. Like, you stupid beans, I cut that body. Anyways, that was really funny. There are tube-like hair follicles that extend below the surface of the skin. At the base of each follicle is the hair bulb, where cells multiply. As hair begins to grow, it pushes up and out of the follicle through the skin, where it can be seen. That's amazing! Even more amazing is that once hair is at the skin's surface, the cells that make up a strand of hair aren't alive anymore. That's what... So, good news and bad news. The hair strands you see, they're all dead. So once you cut them, it's dead hair, you don't feel it, right? So I'm sure you already knew this. So don't get too stressed about something that's already dead. Yes, it's beautiful, but it's, at the end of the day, it's still a dead cell. Dead cells come together and then form your hair strands. That's why it doesn't hurt when hair is cut with scissors. Dead cells? Why does it look so pretty and shiny? For that, you can thank the oil glands, which are also called sebaceous glands. Fancy word. word! The sebaceous glands produce the oil that makes hair shiny. Sometimes the sebaceous gland pumps out too much oil and the person's hair may look greasy. Greasy? Oh, let me touch, let me touch! So, points to note there. It was previously thought in the black community that um, black people say don't produce as much oils as other races. Um, and also some black people believe that our hair doesn't produce as much sebum. That is not true. On an average, a hair produces one ounce of sebum every 100 days. Your hair produces enough sebum. Your hair produces adequate sebum. But just because our hair is very curly, it's hard for the sebum to get from the scalp all the way to the ends of the strand. But ha our hair produces the right amount of sebum. Oh no! What have I done to the beautiful hair? You didn't do anything, Nurb. You may not notice it, but hair is always falling out and being replaced by new hair. Each hair grows for an average of about three years, rests for a few months, and then it falls out. A new hair grows out of the same follicle, replacing the old. What you said here is true, whereby um, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be alarmed when your hair falls um it's normal for hair to fall i mean not in big quantities but just in small quantities so if each week you take time your hair and you see some hair strands falling don't be alarmed that oh your hair is getting bad no it's actually good um that doesn't way the body's natural process of shedding some things so it's it's okay for some some hairs about i believe the average is about 100 strands to fall so it's okay for that to happen your hair is not bad it's just a normal process one of the 100,000 hairs on a typical person's head, about 50 to 100 hairs fall out each day. Well, that's neat. Why is this one black, though? Hair comes in all sorts of different colors. Hair color comes from melanin, which is a pigment. The lighter someone's hair is, the less melanin there is. So someone with blonde hair has less melanin than someone with black hair. Also, people lose the melanin in their hair as they age. Is that why my grampy Jebediah Nerb has all white hair? Exactly. Hair also comes in different textures, like curly, straight, and wavy. So what she said is true. One, one beef I have about this video is just the way they made the curly hair look. It looks a little bit unkept. Actually, it looked very unkept. Um, that's the only beef I have about this video, but... Overall, what you said is true in the sense of hair comes in different colors, colors and textures. And bald, which is beautiful. <gasps> oh my goodness, Chloe, look! The beans I threw, they worked! It's a magical, fantastical, hairy beanstalk! Woo -hoo -hoo! 
Nerve, it's hair. It doesn't need beans to grow. The average hair grows half an inch per month. And some people can grow their hair really long, down their backs or even longer. Oh, yeah? Well, if it doesn't need beans to grow, why does it look so healthy and, uh, magical? It's not magic. Hair length depends on various factors. She said here, uh, hair grows about an average of three years, I believe. Or is that I probably said probably she said five. I don't remember exactly, but um, I read a book that states that hair grows about six to hair grows on an average for six to ten years. So it all depends on what you're blessed with. Your the, your genetic determines what you're blessed with. So if you're blessed with ten years of growth at five inches per year, then you should expect about fifty inches of hair. If you're blessed with five inches six years, then you should expect about thirty inches of hair. So, um, people have different predetermined lengths and your predetermined length just means the point whereby your hair, um, each strand stops growing. Your, your hair can grow past that length. The hair just dies and sheds. Magic nerve. Washing hair regularly helps keep it looking great. <laughs> Wash it and it looks great. Huh, a likely story. Well, it helps to brush and comb it regularly too. And eat healthy foods. A nutritious diet keeps your body healthy from the inside out. Huh, well, I'll be nervous. For the, for the African and African American community, that's the people with um, type 4 hair or very curly kinky hair. Combing your hair um, or brushing it daily that probably will not help, that will just make your hair break. What will help you to achieve the best looking hair is protective styles. Um, yeah, shampooing your hair too is very good. It's going to help you achieve um, a clean scalp. But I'll say shampoo your hair once a week or once every two weeks to achieve a clean scalp. I guess you're right. It is a huge healthy hair. No beans needed. Glad to see you come around. Now, let's climb it and get a better view. Wow. So, um, so that was a good short story about hair. And it just, it tells us a lot about hair. A few things I would like to add to what was said on, in the video, which is already a very good video. A few things I would like to add to that is, first, know that hair of every race is composed of the same principal elements. Second, the follicle is the birthplace of the hair and it is contained in the subcutaneous fatty tissue. Your hair follicle is supplied with blood through some blood vessels. So the cells in your hair bulb, as shown in the video, do divide um, about one to three days and then when they push out, those ones pushed out, die and then they are keratinized. Also remember that hair has three layers, the medulla. Medulla is just a space in between, it's like an empty space in between. This is actually found in those people who have thick hair. For people like us who have fine hair, our hair doesn't have a medulla, which is okay. Um, it's just that a medulla just gives the illusion of thicker hair. Then the cortex. The cortex of the hair is about 80 to 90% of the hair strand. This holds the strength and elasticity of the hair. The cortex is comprised of several long, fibrous, organized chains of protein that twist and curl around each other to form the hair fiber. Then outside the cortex, we have the cuticle. The cuticle is kind of scaly-like and this helps determine how healthy looking our hair is or how frizzy our hair is. The cuticle layer helps give our hair a healthy appearance and things that damage the cuticle layer are relaxes, permanent hair dyes and also a lot of flat ironing. Overall, the hair itself loves a pH of 4.5 to 5.5. This is a healthy pH for the hair and that's the pH of the sebum that comes from your hair. So once you apply leave-in conditioners to your hair that have the right pH, this should help your hair maintain the good 4.5 to 5.5 pH. So I hope by understanding how the hair grows, it's helped you take more power in your journey. It's helped you understand what to expect from your hair. Well, you all take care and I wish you the best. Bye for now.